Mike Perlman here for Techno Buffalo reviewing the $50 with two year contract Pantech Pursuit 2. This is an AT&T phone. Follow me in my hot pursuit of the Pantech Pursuit 2. After a considerable amount of time spent with the Pantech Pursuit 2, I can tell you one thing. It's a phone that really does not offer much. The Pursuit 2 has a 230 megahertz processor, so operating speed was at a base level. Now, this phone also has a touchscreen LCD, 2.8 inch diagonal, and it has a Motorola Droid 3-like keyboard that slides out. This phone is also rather portable and stylish. I got the green model, but it also comes in several other colors you'll find in any standard rainbow. Connectivity is also fairly limited. We just have a USB terminal and there's no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. We do have a camera button, a lock button, and we have physical call, back, and end buttons on the phone's facade. The phone has a two megapixel camera and back, but it's devoid of a flash and image quality was subpar. Also video quality, resolution way too small for any serious purposes. One of the most important aspects of the Pantech Pursuit 2's existence was its ability to make quality calls, especially on the 3G network. So if you're looking for just a basic messaging calling phone, the Pantech Pursuit 2 will do you just right. When it came to battery life, standby time on the Pantech Pursuit 2 was fantastic. It slated up to 250 hours. However, talk time, as soon as you start talking on this bad boy, you have up to three hours of talk time. So it's really not an everlasting gobstopper when it comes to call longevity. I also found the Pursuit 2 to be exceedingly light on memory. It doesn't even ship with a micro SD card in the back and I think we have something like 217 megabytes of onboard storage. But of course one of the most important things about the Pantech Pursuit 2 was its operating system. It runs on a Brew MP operating system which is code for proprietary Pantech uh, last minute throw in an operating system operating system. For the most part I found this operating system to be fairly clunky especially when combined with the 230 megahertz processor. Basically you have three home screens and on one of the home screens you have the ability to add widgets and programs and applications but the scrolling you get this giant scrolling panel and uh, it's very it's not intuitive at all when it comes to adding widgets to the screen. This is not an intuitive phone. It's not a phone that you could pick up and instantly take advantage of iOS or Android or any of the easy shortcuts or anything like that. And uh, I also downloaded, I paid for Shazam, okay, and Shazam cannot even recognize song. The internet browser on this phone is anything but quick, anything but intuitive. It reminded me of the Molasses Swamp from Candyland. For me, it's difficult to justify the purchase of the Pantech Pursuit 2, especially when the iPhone 3GS is $50 for AT&T as well. It just, uh, when you stack them up together, it's, it's a huge monumental difference. The Pantech Pursuit 2 may be too little too late. For Techno Buffalo, I'm Mike Perlman. Stay tuned for more reviews at technobuffalo.com.